addition to my first speech, I train border collies for herding competitions and farm work. I currently own four border collies, which yes, is more than I started this semester with. My most recent addition is a two-year-old female tricolor named Bella. I really don't need another dog, but her full litter mate, my Sam, has blossomed into a wonderful young dog, and if next season goes as projected, we may even make nationals. It took Bella because I couldn't pass up the opportunity. After all, Sam has taught me more than any dog I have met. Now, I've been working with dogs for about 10 years now. I've taught training classes, done behavioral lessons, and worked in a pack of up to 50 dogs at one time. I'm well on my way to be being certified as an animal behaviorist. One of the first times Sam humbled me was when I started his training. He had done a pretty decent job with my first border collie, River. Many new or green handlers often make a ton of mistakes in the training of their first dog and oftentimes ruin it. So I had a pretty big head that I hadn't ruined my first. I bought Sam as a young pup at nine weeks of age. Right from the start, I could tell he was much different than my first purebred, purebred border collie. He would sit back and take in the situation before making his move, while my first border collie, River, had a tendency to dive in head first and think later. I was also quick to learn that Sam is an extremely sensitive dog as well, which is the polar opposite of my River. There have been many times when he's caught me up in my own confidence. I started Sam on sheep at a very young age. Most pups are not started until they're about a year old, as their puppy brains cannot handle the stress and thought processes needed for training. Um, I was ple so pleased with how he was coming along, I started asking too much of him. I signed up for a private herding lesson with one of the big wigs in the herding world, a man named Bill Burhow. Sam was about seven months old at the time of that lesson, and Bill was wary of my decision to try him in the mid-level field for our lesson rather than the beginning um, round pen. I was a little nervous, and Sam could feel it. I was trying to focus on too many different aspects of it at once, and ended up confusing poor Sam. Bill flawlessly stepped in, and in 30 seconds, he had gotten better work out of Sam than I had in his entire life. Here I thought I was doing great as a novice handler, having this young dog coming along so fast, and in that short of a time, he showed me just how inexperienced I really was. My humbling from Sam doesn't end there, however. I stopped asking too much of my young Sam, and when he was about eight months old, we were invited into the high-level field. He was, again, doing much better in his training, and, I, and had stopped getting confused when I stopped trying to force-feed too much training down his throat than he was ready for. Something to note about the high-level field that we got invited to was that there are no fences. It's an open 30-acre pasture on top of Cascade Mountain, um, just on Highway 94, just before the Highway 33 exit as you're headed towards the Dells. When you walk out to the edge of it, you can see straight down to the highway. There are no fences up there. Being invited out there was a real show of confidence for my trainer, so I was eager to show Sam off. My trainer set us up for a long outrun, where I send him out and around to go get the sheep, about 150 yards, something Sam and I had done, or at least come close to doing. I was confident that he could do it. Out there in the field, there was another woman training that day. Both of her dogs had been professionally trained by one of the top handlers in the country, and she had spent thousands of dollars training them with him. My Sam puppy, I had done 100% of the training myself. Sam was excellent the first two times we tried. It was almost picturesque. 20-point outruns, as we call, which is the highest score you can get. And I couldn't have been more proud. My trainer then upped the difficulty for us, and being way too confident in my Sam puppy again, I sent Sam to collect the sheep. He froze and wouldn't move no matter how hard I tried. I was then helpless to figure out how to get him to move. I'd never run into that problem before. I'd never had a dog freeze on me like that. My trainer chuckled and patted me on the back and said, it's too much, kiddo, push him too fast. Again, my own overconfidence in my dog had humbled me in front of someone that I was hoping to impress. The final time I would like to tell you about, but far from the only other time Sam has humbled me, happened earlier this semester. It was Labor Day weekend, and the trial was at the Jefferson Sheep and Wolf Festival. I had to work that weekend in Middleton, so the earliest I could show up was 1 p.m., as there has to be at least five dogs in the class for it to run as per international rules. The class and I couldn't have, or the class couldn't happen without Sam and I. Sam and I were dog number five. Starting midday meant it drew the largest crowds, and it also had the largest number of handlers sitting around waiting for their turn or watching people go after them. All the other people in the class that I ran in had been doing this for over 20 years longer than I had ever owned a dog, much less anything else and had been, at least at some point with some dog, successful in their herding competitions. Sam and I had drawn dog number five, which literally meant that we were the fifth to run. 
As we watched everyone before us, all of the other dogs crashed and burned. They were just naughty, biting sheep, or chasing them, not listening. All normal puppy stuff. Great, I thought to myself. All we have to do to win is to finish the course, something that I knew that we were both well ready for. But as we walked out to the post, I took a deep, deep breath and forced myself to relax. Go, Sam, I said, trying to level my voice. He looked up at me. Go, Sammy. I repeated. He stood up, glanced down the field, and looked up again. Sammy, go! He lied back down. Fail as my heart sunk and my face turned red. I turned to the judge and said thank you, which is the sign for forfeiting any and all points and enabling you to leave the post, which is not something you're allowed to do otherwise. I trotted partway down the field and I sent Sam down again. It was gorgeous. Picture perfect, but we had already dropped all of our points, so we were only allowed to do the basic outrun and brought the sheep back to me. I was so confident in his training, and yet we walked up to the post and everything fell apart because I was overconfident in his abilities and I had not taken him enough different places, so he got excited and got nervous and did what anybody would do. Although afterwards, we are still assured that it happens to many young dogs, and Sam was only about a year and a half at the time. We have this coming summer yet to run nursery, which many dogs never even get to compete in. The class is mostly dogs with experienced handlers. And the class is only for dogs under three years old by the 4th of July of that year. Only registered dogs can compete. And the average doe, more often than enough, is not experienced enough to a handler to bring a young dog up to nursery level competition in order to run nursery before they hit their age limit. Oftentimes, the dog is five or six years old before it hits that nursery level, which is obviously too old to run. Maybe in some places my overconfidence has been warranted, but if not, I know I always have my Sam to humble me.